this is something the president really wanted. He lobbied for this. He personally called the committee chairman on this measure because now the White House understands they have to get together with House Republicans and start agreeing with Republicans on something. They disagreed on the Dubai ports deal. They disagreed on immigration, which could now be put off until after the election, Bob. Well, that brings up a point, uh, Cheryl. Uh, uh, Gloria is absolutely right. This Republican Congress has not always been on the same page with this president, but on this one, they all seem to be together. I think so. In the Senate, you can look for it to be partisan and it to be close, but as far as we can tell, it'll pass there, too. They would not have brought it up to the floor if they didn't think they had the votes. All right. Well, thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, critics, as uh, Cheryl and uh, Gloria pointed out, remind us that any tax cut is just going to drive the national debt higher. And to broaden this out a little, we want to turn now to our business correspondent, Anthony Mason. Anthony, just for the record, how fast is the deficit going up? Bob, at the rate we're going, we're going to crack $10 trillion, and that's with a T, dollars by the end of the Bush presidency. $600 a second. That's how fast the national debt is growing on the national debt clock a block from New York's Times Square. And at more than $8 trillion and counting, the clock can't keep up for long. You're running out of numbers. We're running out of digits, yes. Real estate developer Douglas Durst, the clock's owner, says he didn't plan on the debt reaching $10 trillion. So you figure you're going to run out of space as soon? Within two years. The U.S. is in hock as deep as any nation in history. Who holds all of our IOUs? Well, more than a quarter of our debt is now owed to foreign countries. Japan is our biggest foreign creditor. We've borrowed $673 billion from the Japanese. The Chinese are now number two. Well, in a very real sense, the Chinese Central Bank has financed our efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan. The bill for the war in Iraq exceeds $260 billion, almost as much as we now owe the Chinese government. We are all at the mercy of the world's faith in us. Uh, the, what the collateral for the dollar is the world's idea of America. Jim Grant is editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. If they, if they lose faith in us for some reason, we're in trouble. Uh, the economists use a technical term, we will be cooked. <laughs> Here's why. If our foreign investors decided to move their money elsewhere, we'd have to offer them higher interest rates. That would drive up our own interest rates, make it more expensive to buy homes and pay the mortgage, and ultimately make us all poorer. You do the math, it just doesn't work, and something has got to change. Of course, that's what everyone said when the debt clock was first unveiled in 1989, and we owed a mere two trillion. In the Clinton years, when our debt actually began to shrink, the clock was turned off and covered up. Did you think you'd have to turn it back on again one day? I was pretty sure that something would happen. But I, I never thought that it would be like this. So Durst is planning to build a bigger clock. Today, if we were all billed for the national debt, we'd each owe nearly $28,000, Bob.